All right, real quick, I wanted to show you guys something here. I uh, something I'm not happy about. I was very careful with this piece of material. You can see that I've got some Tyvek. Uh, that's the company that I bought the aluminum from. But I've got some Tyvek down between the aluminum sheets to protect it from scratches and surface scratches. So normally with 6061T6 and at least with a Zenith aircraft, the construction standards say that if you can't catch your fingernail on a, on a scratch, you don't have to worry about it. The only exception to that is the wing spars, which again I stated earlier are the most important structural piece in the airplane. And you have to be very exacting in your standards. So the construction standards for this aircraft say that for any scratch, that you have and again that's if you can catch your fingernail on it a, a very light you know surface mark isn't going to do much i don't even know if you can see some of that on this so so these light surface marks here these are not really an issue and i have to scuff it up with scotch bright before i can prime it anyway for uh, corrosion protection but i flipped it over after cutting it and you can see these scratches all through here I have no idea how those happen unless it happened when I was busting the piece off and it fell on the floor. Maybe it caught on the uh, the concrete. That's my only guess at this point. I was expecting it to hold on to the edge of the table as I was bending it. And then as I, I bent it back, I was hoping it would snap off into my hands. So perhaps I should have done this with another person. I can only guess that these occurred from uh, bending it off uh, and having a droop on the floor while I was snapping it down the length. These are a problem. These, you can hear my fingernail, and I have, I have very little fingernail, and it's catching in every one of those little grooves. So in order to make this a legitimate piece, I have to sand all of those scratches out. Now that's not an issue. I've got a flapper wheel that'll do it. I've got scotch bright pads and everything else, but it is more work than I was hoping to uh, have to deal with for my spars. Not a major issue, but something that I'm not real happy with. So I will have to address that before I can actually assemble uh, this into a full-on wing spar. Now the debate, the debate is going to be whether or not to do that before or after I start drilling all the rivet holes and matching it up to the other parts. I think the best course of action at this point is going to be to do that afterwards because during the construction process I'm liable to scratch it again and again and again and again and it's better just to do the prep work all at once and get all the scratches out and then do final assembly but something I'm really not happy about this easily could have been avoided I it's possible that it was there on this sheet of metal when I bought it however I, there's no way for me to know that and I, I do suspect that I did that when the piece fell to the floor as I was breaking it off the table so I've got more over here that did kind of the same thing all need to be addressed so folks when you're building your airplanes and you're especially with your structural pieces and things like that uh, not only does that an eyesore but in some cases it may actually need to be physically addressed before you can even use the part afterwards so use caution on your on your builds something as simple as just a, a, an old carpet remnant or a piece of this Tyvek and I have plenty of Tyvek rolled up in the corner from the aluminum I've purchased lay it on the ground as a, a drop cloth, if you will, for the if you will for the aluminum, so that you don't end up getting inadvertent scratches that you then have to address later. All right, so I'm back. I cut the uh, second wing spar web out of the 32 thousandths, and I couldn't be happier. This one here, although I do have some of these uh, surface scratches, I'll need to buff out and whatnot. I'm within a quarter of a millimeter tolerance all the way down from every uh, measuring station. So uh, this actually turned out better than the first one. I think what I'm going to do with the first one is take the Vixen file. This here, it's got a, you can see that's a Vixen cut file. It only cuts in one direction, but it removes a lot of metal. Uh, I, I did this on the second one to remove the rough edges from where I bent it and broke it. And just a few passes with the Vixen file took all those rough surfaces off. And... Uh, you know, really knocked the metal down, and then I took the finish file and smoothed it out just a few passes with that, and that took all, every single burr off of there and took that extra half a millimeter that I put into my measurement right out of it. So <clears throat> it's from every place I've measured so far, it's at least 209 millimeters, um, and the most that it's off is by a half a millimeter, which is what the plans call for. 
Now, um, I'm not going to try to get it perfect. There's no sense in doing that. Nothing's going to turn out perfect. Uh, it is very, very close to the tolerances the way it is. And I think I may just slightly take a little bit of edge off the uh, first one with the Vixen file and then finish it up with the finished file. So very happy with the way these turned out. The measurements are perfect. I didn't waste any material at this point. <laughs> so now I have to drill holes and cut lightning holes, uh, add my uh, doublers and my channels and my uh, wing spar mounts, and uh, have to drill very accurate holes in uh, specific locations for all of that. And then, of course, when I'm done with all that, I have to attach the wing ribs and various other pieces so this is actually this part of the project is going to get shelved until i get closer to building my actual wing structures but because i had the full sheet of 32 thousandths i have to make lots of other parts out of that so i needed to cut these big spars out first so that i didn't end up inadvertently cutting the sheet in half and then not having a long enough piece or whatever another thing to note is uh Generally speaking, with 6061T6, you don't have to worry about the direction of the grain of the material. So metal, when it is manufactured, has a grain in it, just kind of like wood does. Uh, you can kind of see it here. Um, it's very hard to see in the metal with this camera, I apologize. But essentially the grain direction runs in the direction that the sheet was formed in. And... Uh, you don't really have to worry about that in just about everything. Some people will tell you that, well, if you bend if you bend a piece of metal along the grain, it's eventually going to crack and all that. And yes, that's true with some type of alloys and some types of metals. But in the Zenith construction standards, it, it blatantly points out you just simply do not have to worry about grain. So <clears throat> despite that, um, the Zenith 701... Um, plans actually do I believe specify that the grain must run lengthwise on the wing spars and that's the only structure you really have to worry about except for maybe a couple of longerons but uh, here in the 750 I haven't seen anywhere in the plans where it, it says that the grain is um, in a required direction and if anybody uh, has some information otherwise I'd appreciate it in a comment in the video but needless to say I still have a lengthwise grain running in my spar because simply at 12 feet long you really have no choice. The widest sheet of aluminum that I can find is five feet wide and that's certainly not long enough to cut a spar. So my grain is running lengthwise in my spar material which is theoretically the strongest way that it should run and uh, I'm going to put extruded angle L angle uh, caps on the top and the bottom here. So theoretically, it should be the very strongest that it can be with the grain running the way that it, it, it's supposed to. But again, the plans for the 750 do not specify grain in anywhere that I can see. But either way, it's the way that it's supposed to be, and you have no choice anyway because you have to cut nearly a 12-foot spar out of a 12-foot sheet of aluminum. So this I'll probably revisit this structure in uh, a few months, but... Uh, We'll cut the video together so you can see every step of the way. Thanks for watching.